find me on Twitter as the Exodus. Uh, so let's get started. <clears throat> A little bit of background about myself. Uh, I started writing VB applications and decompiling code in middle school. Uh, as I got into college, I started doing undergraduate research um, projects and security uh, and cryptography and risk assessment. So that's kind of when I started diving into security. Um, so now I work as an application developer in a state government. Uh, I've been doing Scrum Agile for the past two years. It's kind of a brief overview of my talk, um, kind of give you the, I guess, breaking down security into kind of two major goal, uh, a handful of goals, um, giving you a 10,000 foot overview of what Scrum Agile is, uh, some general terms. This won't be a full data dump, although I could probably bore you out with hours uh, with definitions. Um, how does Scrum Agile benefit developers? Uh, what is the effect on business operations of security teams and development teams can't fully work together um, to kind of achieve their goals? Um, so security, you know, we need to protect the organization and development teams need to improve, modify, uh, and not break current fr functionality and, and they're kind of developing new things. Um, what are the in, uh, security negatives in the Scrum Agile environment? So, why some things in security or some concepts of security might not work in like the Scrum Agile environment? Um, so, with our security goals that I'll outline, how do we apply these to Scrum? Um, then, in security, and I'll talk about this uh, security and development. Scrum integration, so how do we kind of integrate security teams and development teams into the Scrum process? I also point out kind of some limitations of this, of some things that might not work out too well. And then I'll talk about finally wrapping it up with, if we just focus specifically on security teams, how to add them to their own specific agile process. So there's kind of two things I'll highlight, either integrating um, security teams and development teams, or just security teams into a whole agile process. So highlighting two general goals of security, um, we have kind of prevention and training, response and investigation. So prevention and training, we have things like defining policies, procedures to help secure an organization, um, you know, protecting day-to-day -day operations. Um, training, we have things like continuous education, um, telling people what they shouldn't do or helping people realize that they couldn't do, they shouldn't do certain things. Monitoring essential network tools to help identify, um, outsource, outsource or outside intrusions or things happening on the network that might not look so good. Setting up mechanisms to help them implement specific policies. So these are kind of things that fall, that would fall under the, the umbrella of prevention. With response and investigation, we have things like responding to alarms or anomalies, um, figuring out things if, if some things don't look right. So this will be part of the investigation process. Doing the, doing the initial research, research to figure out if things don't look wrong. So kind of an overview, 10,000 foot overview of what Scrum is. Scrum is basically using small teams to break a large project into small manageable short goals or like tiny slivers of a project. Using one to three weeks of time, uh, teams can see, uh, see their progress, uh, their progress on a large project as a complete tasks. Um, teams can identify areas of improvement, uh, look at positive outcomes, see things that they've done well at the end of each sprint.
And so breaking that large project into small manageable goals. Um, some general terms that I'll kind of use. Um, the first one is user stories, so that would be a short specific description of a task. So as X, I want to do Y, so that Z, so like as a user, I want to be able to quickly log in and print a client report. Uh, we have grooming, so that's defining the acceptance criteria, the scope of the project. Um, setting up the user stories. Sprint, I already briefly talked about that. But that is your one to three weeks of time for your specific tasks or projects. Scrum Master, that's the person that helps guide the project, handles any issues that a team uh, might have with a specific task um, that might prevent them from completing it. Uh, the product owner, that's the person that owns the product. Uh, that'll set up the grooming and help define the acceptance criteria. Um, he, the product owner, he or she, uh, helps organize the backlog of things that need to happen and a specific priority. I guess depending on what happened would be the, the order. Retrospective, that's a meeting at the end of each sprint, um, usually run by the Scrum Master uh, for teams to identify things that uh, went wrong. Um, there's also a rolling log, so you kind of go back and see um, is this particular issue continuing to be a problem, or how well are we doing? And a demo is at the end of each sprint, um, displaying uh, to people what you've completed. Uh, this meeting is usually run by the product owner. So those are a handful of terms. So what are the some of the benefits of developers, or some of the benefits with developers and Scrum Agile process, because a lot of people are using it, so why is it sort of so popular? <clears throat> it helps developers focus on completing one, speci one specific task at a time as they assign themselves that task during the sprint. So one developer picks up uh, creating a page or fixing something. Um, so the developer ADD, you you're set to one specific thing at a time. Short daily updates are given, well, daily, so every day, to help keep that individual's focus. So the developer ADD that sometimes occurs, you keep that person on track. Within this meeting, a recap is given of the previous day. So this is what I worked on yesterday. This is what I'll be doing today. If I complete that task, this is what I'll be working on. Um, if there's any issues, you know, they'll look, kind of handle any issues and bring those up. Um, so measurable expectations are given um, with a predefined length of time. So a task is already laid out with, all right, this is going to take me six hours or this is going to take me three hours. So you already have set, you already have that time set and that acceptance criteria is already written out, ideally, you know, in a perfect world, but that doesn't happen all the time. So after each sprint two, uh, in the retrospective, you look back and you see, all right, this didn't work out too well, or this task was grossly overestimated or underestimated, so it helps keep the measurable expectations of what someone should do in line. Um, and because all those requirements and acceptance criteria are already defined when someone picks up a given task, you're not going to have scope creep. And so as tasks are completed, you're going to have these small slivers of the, of the entire project start to layer on, and you sort of see the completion um, of this of a larger project. And so as you start piling on these layers, you can you begin to focus on um, and figuring out the deadline of a specific project so it doesn't have an open-ended 
date for completion. So what are the effects on business operations if development teams and security teams can't work together to achieve their goals? Because security needs to kind of protect the organization and development teams need to improve and modify current functionality. And if they don't achieve this, this will affect business operations. I'll kind of pinpoint and focus on the pros for right now. Since security needs to protect the organization, it's going to protect the data, finances, daily operations. <clears throat> so, you know, defining better policies, helping to educate people. <clears throat> All this affects business and how they perform their operations. Security is also going to help prevent data loss, so all your data is not going to be out there. Um, so possibly setting up disaster recovery plans. I mean, these are all just some of these are just examples. Building better policies, better mechanisms, so hardening the shell outside of your business. And also responding to incidents. Um, with development teams, when you complete a project, you can move on to another project. Um, you're going to have a s measurable metrics. Um, your development, you're going to have better development time, efficiently, uh, more efficient use of a resource, better documentation. <coughs> and better, uh, more feature-complete software. Um, this is all going to help. These are kind of the goals, some of the goals of just development. And when you have more feature-complete software, that's going to help business operations. The better documentation is going to help business build training manuals on a specific product. Some possible cons if they don't, if security and development doesn't complete their goals. Um, since sometimes security is, can be reactive, um, you can't fully plan for certain things that could happen. Um, when new policies or mechanisms are created, if the educational goal isn't really there, then Sometimes users won't understand why something is happening. Uh, this can affect people and the organization itself, affect people's daily routines, um, because their daily tasks have become more complex. One possible thing is if they have a lack of funding, this could also affect business operations, because you won't be able to build those uh, better policies or implement better security mechanisms. A lack of knowledge on the security side, again, could also affect business operations um, because you leave those, there could be a danger of exposed systems that you might not know about because you're not securing the environment. And a lot of things can can come from that. On the development side, so if tasks aren't completed on time, um, you can go back to funds that could uh, deplete quicker. Um, so if you have contractors on a specific project helping the development team out, those funds, you could lose a, a resource. Uh, future projects could be pushed back to unknown dates. <clears throat> and then kind of if security teams and development teams, uh, if things occur, there could be a, a lack of faith on those specific individuals or groups. So what are some security negatives of Scrum Agile? So what things could be can make it difficult to implement Scrum 
agile in, in a given environment. Um, if teams are limited to a set number of tasks during a sprint planning, uh, this can account for emergencies. So if emergencies come up and you have so many tasks allocated for your time, um, those emergencies don't have acceptance criteria or you don't know how long it's going to take you to fix something or figure out if something is actual an emergency. So that undefined and undefined um, scope is just could be a black hole of time. User stories sometimes can encapsulate many aspects of security. So defining as X, I went to Y so that Z um, might not be defined and so as a, as a product owner I want to stop from getting hacked that can't really def be defined too well. So given our initial security goals of, of training, uh, response, investigation, how do we apply these in a scrum environment? <clears throat> Uh, with prevention and training, um, those can be flushed out in grooming. Uh, so kind of limiting the scope of a specific project for a given task. Uh, so does redefining a specific policy meet the definition of done as we want it, or does it need more uh, to really become a proper policy? In the re retrospective, you could look back and see um, if a certain prevention measure isn't as great as it, great as it should be, um, if training could be increased um, from what it was previously set. So you can look back and see all these things if they need to be uh, better defined. With response inside their retrospective, um, you can look back again and identify things that, that went wrong and figure out how to fix them. Uh, this could possibly lead into more tasks, uh, which I'll talk about here shortly. And then the investigation portion of our goal, um, that could be set during the demo. So. So when you figure out something's wrong, you can demo it. So in security and development teams, I'll talk about how do you fully integrate both teams into the Scrum Agile process, so as essentially one team. Kind of bring up some possible limitations as well for this. <clears throat> so kind of as we start to integrate the two teams together, um, the security team should start by sitting into Scrum Agile related meetings uh, with a specific development team. If there are multiple teams, you might want to kind of focus on only one team at a time or even have kind of break up the security team a little bit <clears throat> and kind of spread yourself between two teams or multiple teams. To help security teams uh, continue to dive into the Scrum Agile process, maybe take a training, um, to help continuously to integrate themselves into this entire process, um, then actively participate. Schedule trainings with developers to help kind of teach them and explain some security concepts to them explain why something might be beneficial if they kind of don't understand. You can also meet with the product owner and Scrum Master as well um, to have things added to the backlog that could be eventually groomed. So as you integrate yourself into this team itself, uh, things could be added to the, to the backlog as part of the project or um, 
I guess, or not. Some security fixes might not be immediately within the scope of the current project, so that could be a possible limitation. <clears throat> One way to solve this would be to leave some idle capacity during a sprint to allow people um, to handle critical issues or issues that need to be fixed with a specific project uh, but have not yet been groomed. So it goes back to grooming out a specific task and building that acceptance criteria. Some general limits. Um, so if there are multiple development teams but a limited number of security teams, um, it might be difficult to focus on multiple teams Um, security teams might uh, spread themselves too thin. At some point, um, a new developer might come on board. So that developer onboarding um, might become an issue if there isn't necessarily a security background, so you might have to start all over uh, with kind of grooming that developer on how to write proper code and how to sanitize your inputs and just things along those lines. So really that training, once you first start integrating yourself into the scrum process, we'll have to start all over again. <clears throat> there could also be a learning curve on both teams. Um, some developers just changing how they wait how they write code. Um, that could be a little rough for them because they've been, they could be writing code for years, but they only know one specific way. So doing things a different way might be kind of difficult for them initially. Um, there could be a learning curve for security professionals as well, just kind of learning uh, the Scrum Agile process and kind of changing the way they do things. Another frustration, just adding out of scope project items uh, to the backlog that are not within the current scope of the development teams might be an issue. So if something's not necessarily high priority, but you can figure out if things are broken, um, those things might not get fixed. And as things start to pile up in the backlog, <coughs> um, those higher critical, those things that aren't, aren't higher critical could be pushed back even further. So that could be a possible frustration. So finally, implementing Agile into just uh, strictly um, security teams. I'm going to give kind of a high level example. So let's say we want to improve current path, password authentication on an external web app. Um, so in the beginning, uh, we might have various tasks to help get this project rolling. <clears throat> the product owner might start breaking down current policies, uh, the current policy, and figure out if, say, do we really need to improve this or not? Um, so we'll start defining this project and breaking it down into our small slivers. A task could be determined if there's documentation, so we'll start piling on tasks, which are our slivers. If there's no documentation, someone with technical knowledge might need to sit in the grooming session on the current to help define what the current system is, or a task could be to figure out what the current system is. So you start building these tasks to help figure out if, you're, if the current web app is working or if it's not. So just figuring out if, if it really needs to be redefined or adjusted uh, could be initial tasks. So as we start looking into this current password policy, we, start, we then start 
building our user stories and defining our acceptance criteria of things that need to happen uh, in a specific task. So this could be a research phase. <clears throat> so each part will be broken down into user stories. We'll start building um, start building our task and user stories. So some examples of this could be, as a non-technical user, how do I log in? Or as a user, I need to increase com uh, password complexity of the current password by setting a minim minimum character length. Or as a user, I should not be able to use the same password eight times. Or as an admin, I need a more complex user uh, password than other users. <clears throat> so those could be some examples. From here, each user story will be will extract our acceptance criteria <clears throat> to be more specific. <clears throat> so if a task can't be finished in a given sprint, we need to figure out a way to break that down into smaller uh, tasks. So we'll break it down even further because we want small slivers. And so as we start to do this, if there wasn't documentation before, we'll have correct documentation, um, which is a task in itself to <clears throat> some additional tasks that we can consider before the project is finally finished. Um, testing out uh, what the current password complexity really is. So if, it's, if we don't know, then we need to kind of figure that out. Um, and so as we start, <clears throat> so once we change the password complexity, just verifying that it's there could also be a task. And if there are any issues, that's another task. <clears throat> so there are many tasks that you can continuously build onto the project itself, even after the, the password policy has changed. Um, then you also have maybe employee training on how to use uh, the new password complexity. So that could be another specific task. And even just monitor, monitoring um, what's kind of happening um, with your project could be another task. Um, so that's kind of how you, um, that would be an example of <coughs> implementing agile and security teams. And that's, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you.